I was interested in chemistry from a young age. When I was in fifth grade, I wrote down that I wanted to work on epileptic cures and work on research for disabled children. When we were seniors in high school, the teacher sent it back to us. And it was kind of neat to see that I was going on to be a research scientist, making the tools that doctors can provide to patients. I was introduced to cannabis as my brother was working at a construction company and was asked to build a dispensary. And through that effort, became more aware of the whole community, went out into the public and started talking to some of the individual patients. And I myself had my own medicinal needs. So I was curious, how much could this be effective for me? Which types of medicines might be best? THC and CBD are both used across medicinal use and adult use. THC is rather psychoactive, where CBD is not. Really early, you can see research that suggests CBD might be very helpful, but you go talk to a lot of the dispensaries, they're not really aware of what a CBD or a non-psychoactive use of cannabis might be like. What if a lab was present and could tell them how do we really start to put medicine into medicinal cannabis? When we first started, that was the first question was, why would you ever touch that stuff? Well, when you look at it in a different fashion, when you understand that it could be very beneficial in therapeutic uses, helping you know epileptic children or other individuals who might be ailing, or helping people reduce their opioid use, you can look at cannabis in a much broader fashion than just THC. Um, an AIDS patient here in, in Southern California. I was really concerned about HIV meds that promotes cancer on the long-term side effects. I started having tumors in my head, my ears, my temple, CBD interrupts cancer growth. So I started making tinctures for myself. The tincture is a liquid form of cannabis. I noticed my autoimmune system was really starting to kick. And yeah, I'm doing really fine and life's good. I rely a lot on the laboratory's reports. I want to make sure that it does not have any mold or mildew and safe for people to ingest. The predominant amount of work that happens here is analytical chemistry. So what molecules are present in which products? If I can figure out how to say this type of cannabis product is gonna be best for this consumer, I really have a winning solution. Lawmakers have established the laws. Now the regulator has to establish the rules and details of those laws. So they're really leaning on laboratories and their experience to say, hey, scientists that are out there that have thought about these problems, what do we need to know as a regulator so that we can get these rules set up in the right fashion? We have to educate through research and scientific understanding. These professional associations, such as the American Chemical Society, have message boards, they have networking events, and they're all geared towards bringing these people together who have been largely isolated in the past. Through the Cannabis Chemistry Subdivision, we're seeking to validate the good works that people are doing and provide additional collaboration opportunities and ways for people to explore this expanding space. The world is very bright for chemists to get engaged inside of cannabis and really take a fresh look at it and say, how do we harness this natural resource that we could use in different types of ways to improve society and, and the world around us?